One thing I'd change about Go, I do want to be completely upfront. This is a hashtag ad for boot.dev. If you don't know about boot.dev, it helps you do a whole back-end career. It kind of gamifies the whole process. Everyone that I've talked to really loves it. This is why I like sponsoring it. So everyone say thank you to Lane. This is awesome. Uh, he's very, very good at Go. I've been on his podcast. And so we're doing a reading for them. So I just wanted to be obviously, you know, clear about that up front. Second, use code PrimeGen if you want to support me. Very, very fantastic. All right, let's get started. Go is built for grug-brained programmers like me. I too am grug-brained. I do pick up, I do pick up mallet from time to time. I pick up club, but then I calm down. I do not grug smash. Uh, grug-brained developer is not so smart. Gru but grug-brained developer program many long year and learn some things, although mostly still confused. Apex predator of grug is complexity. Complexity is bad. Say again. Complexity, very bad. You say now. Complexity, very, very bad. Given choice between complexity or one-on-one -on -one against T-Rex, Grug take T-Rex. At least Grug see T-Rex. If you haven't read uh, Grug Brain, by the way, extremely great uh, dev article. It's by the person who makes um, HTMX. It's very, it's very, very fantastic. The Go team took many years to add generics to the language. It was a good addition, and many argue that it was an obvious decision that should have been made sooner. I disagree. The simple truth is that when you're building applications, especially back-end web applications or CLI applications, which is where Go shines as a language, in my opinion, you just don't need generics all that often. They're quite nice to have, but far from necessary. Are you building a clever library using general purpose data structures? Sure, generics make your life much easier. But let's be real. I'm over here parsing JSON and shoveling strings into databases. I don't need three layers of abstraction to get her done. <laughs> this is a hot take. This is a smoking hot take, lad. Oh my goodness. Small brain code work good for application layer. Uh, what else is go, uh, is go good for? Before I start shitting on my favorite language, let me point out some other reasons I love Go. Grug brain syntax. Yep, it's it's super simple. That's the that's the thing about Go. Go is so simple that you turn on Copilot and you can just start writing it. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that seems about right. Ah, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Like you have to have a couple intuitions about Go, and you pretty much can just write Go without actually knowing Go. And Copilot will effectively be the pilot. It's so simple. It's boring. It's I mean, there's something very beautiful about that. Statically compiled binaries, a tool chain with built-in formatting, testing, and dependency management. Dependency management built uh, on Git repos. Let's go. This is a good choice, by the way. This is a good choice. A standard library that cares about the web. Go routines and channels concurrency that doesn't suck. Agreed. Fast despite a garbage collector. Agreed. And now with arena allocations as a potential, I mean, Go is is literally 99.5% of Rust, right? I mean, that's a thing to really consider is that once you get in, especially once you get into multi-threading and all that, Go can be real fast, right? Go can, in some cases, beat Rust because it just doesn't need to do all the safety. Flag on play, unnecessary dick riding, could be. But again, you got to write Go. That's always the challenge with Go is that you got to write Go. It's the downfall of Go. What would I change about Go? Not a hard question. It's some types. Oh, baby, this is what I've been talking about. I want them so bad. Or enums, tagged unions, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, Go currently has a shitty excuse for enums. <laughs> Can we all agree? Can we all agree that this, this is just the worst? Is this not just the worst part about Go? They just, dude, just get rid of this already. Get rid of it. They're pretty bad. Go enums are verbose, error prone, and don't actually enforce much of anything from the uh, from a typing perspective. Let me show you what I mean. Type color int. It's just an int. Uh, uh, this is a type alias. At the end of the day, the new color type is just an int. It's not really a new type. It's just a new name for an existing type. In this world, every integer on God's green earth is a valid color. That's crap. <laughs> Hey, don't tell a color what it can and can't be, okay? Just because you see color as red, green, blue, zero, one, two, does not mean that three doesn't exist, okay? It's out there, all right? If I wanted the, that, let's see, if I wanted that, I would just use int. I want to restrict the set of valid colors to a specific subset of colors, red, green, and blue. <laughs> He even uses red, green, blue. <laughs> let's go. Iota. Iota, isn't Iota the smallest like thing isn't it just like a tick uh iota uh, keyword and go is a special feature that allows you to define a sequence of constants that increment by one uh small unit yes yeah 
uh iotat iotat is this yeah it's like it's like nothing right yeah you're a tick okay the iota keyword in go is a special feature that allows you to define a sequence of constant that increment by one sounds useful it's not it's just cryptic syntactic sugar a small brain developer might like uh might uh, let's see like me might make a few constants like this this is i mean honestly like i really don't mind this versus this i mean like yeah i can get used to this but do i need iota no i don't need iota you know what i need real enums you know what I mean? I need real enums. That's what I want. Here's the ticker. The IOTA method uses the same amount of lines of code, but now I need to count on my fingers and toes to figure out the actual value of any of these constants. <laughs> yeah, hey, what's pink? You know what? Hey, you know what you should have been doing, Lane? Uh, Lane? You know what you, you know what you've know been doing wrong, buddy? Buddy man guy? If you were just on the Lord's editor of Vim, you would have been able to go like this. Ah, pink is nine. Okay, pink's nine. You can tell right away that it's nine by the way it is. I can just tell, you know why? Because I have relative numbers. Loser. Nine. Got him. Dap that. All right. What's the value of maiv? Maiv. Uh, 12. Duh. Got him. Uh, additionally, the, uh, there isn't even popular support, uh, let's see, popular support to quickly marshal these integers into strings uh, for debugging without writing mountains of boilerplate code. Uh, frankly, I just pretend IOTA doesn't exist and instead define string constants like a peasant. You know, there is something really nice about this. I mean, obviously for serialization, totally sucks. You would much rather use integers, better for protobufs, better for everything, right? It's a much better format to use, but I could understand why you want to do this due to Go's complete lacking. Despite the verbosity, nothing is safe. Believe it or not, I still do this in Go. Clearly not a color. The compiler doesn't care. The color type uh, we made is just an alias for string. Any string is a valid color. Sure, I defined some constants, red, green, blue, but they're just constants that I hope and pray and beg my team use. Oh, man. This is like a, I do, I can just feel my upsetness rising because I do agree. This is just the worst. I have no way to enforce this stuff at compile time. And so now my only choice is to write runtime checks everywhere I use this code. Why didn't you use a valid color? <laughs> is this not, like this is goes, I honestly am on team goes, this is goes worst feature. Eh, ew, runtime. And plus you don't want to do runtime checks. This is a compile time check. Why would you want to add wait to your server to do this if there's one thing i hate more than indenting with spaces it's okay oh my god can we all just take a moment here and just like yo why are you trying to trigger me article why are you try why are we trying to fight here okay we don't need to fight we don't need to fight we can just all agree that consistent white space is nice okay it's doing literally and tab suck and, and doing literally anything in runtime yeah how to make go better. I can't believe I'm using TypeScript as an example of a language that does something well, but here we are. Okay, so I actually disagree right away. I actually hate TypeScript for this, but we can keep on going. I hate their unions. I hate, I hate their unions. I hate their unions with a passion. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, but I get it. I get why you're using, it's, it's easier to explain than Rust. If you were to use Rust, it's just a lot of confusion. Shut up and take my money. Look at that. It's simple. It's elegant. It's, do you see me? You see this guy? You know why it's not technically safe? Everyone knows why it's not safe, okay? Look at this. Type uh, color equals red, uh, green, blue. Uh, okay, blue, blue, blue my... Did you just try to blue my boolean? And then we go like this. Type thing equals foo is a color, right? And then we go like this. Function foo. And it has a string passed in, right? It's a string and it returns a thing. And guess what? We go like this uh return okay no that thank you for that uh return uh json dot uh parse string boom json returns an any and any converts this thing into valid thing with no checking it just thinks it is but you still have to do runtime checks if you decode anything you have to do a runtime check yeah anyways just something to think about just something to think about. It's why it's why it's why me and TypeScript don't get along that well. But I understand what you're saying. You want something that you you constrain it, and when you have a function, you enforce it, right? I'm on that team. Sometimes provide more type safety, more expressiveness, and easier to read to, uh, and easier to understand. All the while being less verbose. It's a win-win-win. If it weren't uh, for Go's backwards compatibility promise, which I love. Uh, I'd even rip out the stupid IOTA keyword in addition to adding some types. Absolutely. 
breaking. TypeScript snatches defeat from the jaws of victory. Let's go. Please tell me. I, I'm hoping he stole that because I stole from somebody else, but I love that phrase. This is my favorite phrase in the universe. I say this to my kids, right? When, 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 like you do this all the time. Have you ever been doing something super good and then you make one shortcut and then your shortcut just keeps bleeding and you're just like, you just keep on going and you're just like, all I have to do is just change one thing. But for whatever reason, I want to just finish this project. And it's just like, stop snatching defeat from the clutch, like from the clutches of victory. Why are you doing that? I, uh, let's see. TypeScript did it. They have a beautiful, beautiful sum types. They're called unions. TypeScript uh, in TypeScript, but they're the, uh, but they they are the same thing. Thing. Uh, then some galaxy brained 10x dev decided that it also needs to be an enum keyword, so that way we have two ways to accomplish the same thing. I do not like enums in TypeScript. Right go, be grug, pray for some types. I am completely on this team, right here. I do hope go can do union types. I love unions. Um, even simple unions, even unions uh, in some small amount would be fantastic. There's there's many problems when it comes to TypeScript and union types. Uh, there's like these easy things you can do. Uh, let me give you a little example of why TypeScript is truly just a just a language of um, of just emotional pain. Let me just give you a quick one, okay? Uh, let's go like this. Are you ready for this one? Function foo uh, takes in uh, args. So that's going to be a number or a string array, right? Right? Boom. Okay. Does that look good? Does that look good? And let's define a type. Let's call this uh, my union. My union can either be a number array or a string array. Okay. I'm going to go like this. Args.push69 and I'm going to args.push420. Right? I'm going to push a string or a number. And now let's just say I have a const uh, my thing, which is going to be a my union of that. Now what I can do is I can go like this. I can call my thing. And look at that. It literally has no, it, it doesn't know. It, it has no idea. It says, hey, you're good, bro. Hey, hey, man, that's cool. It's not cool. That's not cool. That ain't cool. That's why I like tagged unions because tagged unions require the same type, right? Um, these do not require the same type. This allows for something that, you know, they effectively, they allow it to break some or they allow, in TypeScript, it allows it to, to effectively capture some of the type. So a number array really should technically be able to pa be passed in here. Because if you think about it, a number array is is like a number or string array. But to me, this up-level casting is inappropriate. Because if I define a number array, it's not a string array, right? And so even if I jump up here and say, hey, there are no strings in this ever, they're okay. They're okay with that. And for me, that's like, that's the, that, you know, you always hear me shitting on TypeScript and all these things. This is one of the biggest reasons I shit on TypeScript because when you develop libraries, you run into this kind of crap all the time. Okay. This is life. Welcome to life. You run into this kind of stuff all the time. When you're not working in that and you're working in this beautiful UI land where all you do is just play around with React components, guess what? You don't really run into that. And that's okay. I don't care. Uh, but for me, that hurts emotionally. I just want good typed unions, and I'm completely on uh, boot.dev's team right here, which is IOTA suck. It's goes by far worst feature. I wish they had tagged unions. Honestly, I, to me, that would make the language feel almost complete, is a more generalized standard library now that you have generics and uh, tagged unions, and boom, you got yourself like... Like, Go is a competitive AF language, right? It is as good as any other language can be in a modern era while still having the simplicity of a garbage collection, but having all the goodness of a compiled language, right? Which is like everything you've ever wanted. Um, Case-sensitive visibility, I don't like it, but I get it. I can, I can deal with that, right? That doesn't really, you know, I would have preferred pub. Can we all agree? We all prefer pub, right? Why, why do that? Why do case sensitivity for visibility? I don't get that. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't bother me enough. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of how I think about it in my head. Um, anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this reading. I uh, really appreciate that. Go check out boot.dev. Use code PrimeGen if you want to. Uh, fantastic. Absolutely am happy about them. They do a good gamification of learning backend development. 
uh, and it's really, really good. So my recommendation, like, cause I get the question all the time. Well, how do I learn backend? How do I make a career choice? How do I make a switch? I would consider this one of my go-to resources. If I were you and you were me, I'd use your body to go to boot.dev. The name is I just did an ad. Yeah, I just did an ad. A gen. 